the Las Vegas real estate market for June 2020. That's what I'm talking about today and I'm starting right now. Everyone. Welcome back to my channel. I'm Angela O'Hare, your favorite Las Vegas realtor. And welcome to my monthly market update for Southern Nevada. And in this issue, I will be discussing June 2020 numbers. And oh my God, <laughs> pretty crazy numbers with all things considered. I can't say that word because if I say that word, then Google and YouTube flag it. So we all know what word I'm talking about. It starts with a C, ends with an S. <laughs> so the Las Vegas housing market hit an all time high last month. Crazy, right? No one ever thought that. Um, a lot of people thought that there was gonna be a recession. A lot of people thought the prices were gonna plummet. That is not the case for June. And obviously this is a strong indicator that with everyone going back to work, people are out there shopping. And it's not just people, locals that are buying, it's also out of state people that are buying. So basically last month, there were 2,464 listings that sold, which is up 44.7% from May, but down 15.1% from June of last year which is fine because we knew that you know obviously we are not going to hit those numbers but there's a reason why i think we didn't have as many sales this june compared to last june and i'm going to go over it in just a minute so here is the shocker that i'm going to go over so the medium sales price went from 315,000 in may to 325 thousand in June. This is a record all-time high. We've never reached this number before in the past. When we hit the peak in June of 2006, it was at 315,000. So we are 10,000 above that number. Of course, you also have to take into consideration inflation and obviously that number if it was an in inflation would be over in the 400,000s. However, 325,000 during a craziness thing that's happening is pretty crazy in my opinion. <laughs> and the reason why I think that we had fewer sales in June compared to June of last year is because we don't have enough inventory on the market. So when we don't have enough inventory, what's going to happen? The home prices keep on going up and we're not stabilized. It's just crazy. 315 to 325 in one month also, 10,000 increase, that's just unheard of. And what that's telling me is that we do not have enough listings in this entire valley to support the amount of people that are buying. I am out there, literally, no kidding, every friggin' day showing houses. And sometimes the homes that my clients like are gone the next day. I mean, you gotta be fast, you gotta be quick. Especially, like I've said this in the last couple of months, if your home is moving ready, semi-updated, or at least clean, decluttered, a great home, great location, it's gonna sell super, super fast. Um, we're seeing multiple offers, seeing a lot of cash buyers out there. A lot, a lot of cash buyers out there buying. And um, I've said this, if you're a seller, I kid you not, you need to put your home on the market right now. I mean it, I mean, you need to sell. We don't have enough homes for the buyers that are coming in. We need homes. If you're thinking about relocating, downsizing, upsizing, whatever it may be, now is the time to cash out on your equity, sell your home, and move on, <laughs> right? <laughs> um, and then we talked about this, you know, I've had, you know, there's a lot going on with the market and a lot of people think that um, once the forbearance period ends, then a lot of bankruptcies are going to happen or foreclosures are going to happen. And I don't see the foreclosures happening now after much consideration because the, and how it's different from 2008 
is because people now have equity in their homes. They've, if they bought it in 2008 from now, they actually have equity. So who wants to lose out on that equity if they can't afford their mortgage payments? If you can't afford your mortgage payments, sell your home. And I'm not trying to get listings, I'm just here to tell you the facts, the truth, what is going on with this crazy market here in Las Vegas. Um, seriously. There are foreclosures out there, but it's not like crazy like everyone had anticipated. And for next month's numbers, when I go over July's numbers, I think it's going to be even crazier. I have five closings this month and still working on closings for August. I have, I'm literally, like I said, I'm booked out all month with clients coming in from out of town to buy. And I have a lot of clients that are wanting to buy but can't because they cannot find the perfect home because there is not enough inventory. So this is my spat. I'm done with the spat. The key is if you're a seller, take advantage of your equity, sell now, rent, get your, get, you know, get yourself back on your feet, and then buy in a couple years. Hopefully the market will go become more stable, but right now it's just cray cray. So the good thing is, is that we did have a good increase of new listings last month. We had about 3,244 new listings, which is up 0.4% from May, but still considerably down from last year at 22.7%. Uh, again, I don't know why people don't want to sell their homes. I, I know obviously the fear of you know what and catching it and spreading it, um, but I think if you make sure that if you do have a listing that everyone has to wear a mask when they come in, provide booties, provide hand sanitizer, maybe, maybe even require them to wear gloves while they're previewing your home. Just food for thought. Um, you know, we have to go in on with our day-to-day -day lives and we can't let this silly thing, can't say the name, ruin our everyday lives. If you want to sell your home, don't let one thing affect that, okay? Just food for thought. And there are a total of 5,079 homes listed without offers at the end of June, which is down 12.4% from May and down 35.2% from the prior year. And then our months of supply went from 3.4 months from last month back down to 2.1 months of housing supply. So that's again a strong indicator that we are in a seller's market right now. Don't get me wrong, just because we are in a seller's market doesn't mean that you as a buyer cannot get a great deal. I have five closings this month four of them are on the buy side and all four of them I was able to negotiate a phenomenal deal for my buyers. One of them was what? We negotiate down in price by 10k I think but the seller paid 8500 in closing costs. Then we another one we negotiated like 5500 in closing costs. Another one, I mean, pretty much I had all my buyer's closing costs covered with a couple of them where we negotiated down in price. Again, the key is having a real estate agent that knows how to analyze the market accordingly to make sure that one, your client is not overbidding on a home and not overpaying on a home, and two, that you get the right value of the home. I mean, really, right now some people are still overpricing. But the key is, as an agent, we need to price at or below market value so that we can sell it accordingly. Because what's happening is there are bidding wars. People that have cash, have the means, can outbid anyone that's having a typical loan and go over in value. And the one thing about being a cash buyer is they don't have to do an appraisal. So whatever price that they pay for that home, that's now the new value of the home which increases, it's a, it's a never ending cycle. And a lot of times sellers go for the cash buyer because they don't have to worry about the appraisal. So that's food for thought. Um, now if you are in a multiple offer situation and you are financing, then there are several strategic ways to help ensure that maybe your offer, offer will get accepted and looked at. The most important factor is not to ask for a lot of concessions, especially for closing costs. If you have the closing costs, you can afford to pay them. Unfortunately, I suggest paying for them if you know if that's what you want and that's the dream house that you want. I mean, you have to pay for the house. 
um, for the value that it's asking for and then also for the closing costs. Now the key is if the home is overpriced and they accept your offer, once the appraisal goes through, there's three things that can happen. One, the home appraises above value, which you're good. Or two, the home appraises at value, again, you're good. Or three, the home appraises below value. And when it appraises below value, that's when the buyer and the seller go back to the negotiating table and renegotiate the price. Sometimes the seller will say, no, I want this price. You need to pay the difference. And the buyer's like, no, I can't afford to pay the difference. I'm already paying a down payment and closing costs, yada, yada, whatever it might be. So there's different scenarios of things that will happen during the whole um, process, especially when there are multiple offers. Sometimes I discourage my clients to be put in that position because it's just very hard breaking a letdown um, unless you have a very extremely strong offer or you're paying cash. And 59.1% of the closings was on the market for 30 days or less. And in May, this number was 66.4%. And in June 2019, it was 57.7% of the homes was on the market for 30 days or less. You know, Las Vegas saw a lot of craziness happen for the last few months. Our unemployment was freaking crazy. Let's see. In February, we were at 3.9% of unemployment. And then in March, or I guess April, it went to 34%. And then in May, it dipped to 29%. So we still have a lot of unemployment. Uh, the casinos are opening back up, which is a good thing. However, um, things are getting a little sticky again. I heard that Caesars Palace closed for two weeks because someone had that C word. Um, so it's just very crazy and everyone has to be cautious. I don't see this thing ending for a long time. I think we got several months of being very precautious but again if you're a seller I suggest you sell now if you can take advantage of the buyers that are out there we need listings I am serious again we need homes on the market and then if you're a buyer you need an agent that knows how to negotiate for you and looks at your best interest knows when to make the deal and what's the best value for you. Um, and it's not much else I can say is that it just has been a very crazy two months in real estate. And I think it's gonna be crazy for the next couple of months. Um, I've been pretty accurate with my predictions or I've always been pretty close to what really is happening in the market because the numbers don't lie and being an agent out there day in and day out, I see it constantly. And I kid you not, I am seriously booked all week, every week for the month of July, showing clients from out of state. And then I do have a couple in-state clients. And the reason I have a lot of out of state clients is, and they're not just all from California. A lot of them are from back east, New York, New Jersey, a couple Californians, but they are taking advantage of the number one reason why most people move here is the uh, no state income tax and then also the lower property values. So Nevada is a great place to live. We are getting bought out. Hopefully we don't get too crazy. Yeah, it's nice as a real estate agent to sell bigger priced homes. However, that's not my goal. My goal is praying that it is still affordable to the people out there. Uh, oh, one numbers that I did want to go over that I forgot um, one of my clients that watches on YouTube always wants to know what is the luxury real estate market, what's happening with the luxury real estate. So basically for last month in June, there were 39 homes that sold that were a million and above. And then for May, that was 34. So we had what a five home increase from May to June. And then also the medium sales price increased in June for the 1 million and above homes. In May it was 1,330,000 and in June it was 1,375,000. So that was a huge increase. I mean, not huge, but it's a, it's a good increase considering that it's the high-end homes. I mean, you wouldn't think that high-end homes would also increase as well. But they are selling also, so that's a food for thought on that. Um, if you'd like to download the full report provided by the Las Vegas Association of Realtors, I posted a link down in the comments below. 
Let me know what your thoughts are of what's happening with the real estate market. You know, it's just, I've had several people think, say that it's gonna crash in six months. It may, it may not. No one can really predict it. I can just only go with what's happening in this moment and we should live moment to moment, right? Not predict what's gonna happen in the future. <laughs> Anyways, uh, leave a comment, be nice, all that jazz. But as always, if you like this video, be sure to hit that thumbs up button, leave a comment down below, share with a friend, and subscribe to my channel if you wanna learn a lot about Las Vegas. I cover a lot about Las Vegas, Las Vegas real estate, and my number one coverage is covering the Northwest Corridor, all the communities on the Northwest side of town. A lot of people ask me about Henderson, and I'm familiar with the Henderson area, but my expertise is from Summerlin South, or I guess the Southwest up all the way to the Northwest and North Las Vegas. Um, but my main focus has always been Summerlin, Desert Shores, the Lakes, Piccoli Ranch, um, Providence, and Sky Canyon. Uh, those are the areas that I am more really, really familiar with. Anyways, enough about that. Hope you guys are being safe. Hope everyone's doing well. And I look forward to seeing you guys on the next one.